Solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, Corpus Christi. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, We will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord, and rising early the next day he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and twelve pillars for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God? For this reason he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, 
Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Exodus 24, 3 to 8. This is the passage which talks about the covenant that God had made with the people of Israel. There was a sprinkling of blood on the people, and there's a reason for that, because when a covenant was made, the actual phrase used was the cutting of a covenant. It always involved a sacrifice. Then the sprinkling of the blood meant that the people were committing themselves, body and soul, to this covenant. Remember, blood signifies life, and so in a sense the people are bonding their life to that of the person with whom they're making the covenant. The second reading comes from Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. It speaks about how Jesus has allowed his blood to be spilt. Previously in the Old Testament times, the spilling of the blood of an animal brought forgiveness of sins. And the theory behind us was the idea that sin brings a little bit of death into one's soul. And blood signifies life. So the spilling of the blood of an animal was a transfusion of life to heal the death that one brought into one's life through that sin. While the blood of animals doesn't really do the job that's needed, these sacrifices have to be repeated over and over. And so what was needed was the blood of Jesus, the only Son of God, that blood was spilled once and forever. When we celebrate the Mass, we're not repeating the sacrifice of Christ. Rather, we're entering into the mystery of the sacrifice of Christ. We are somehow present at the Last Supper, at the cross, and at the resurrection. The Gospel is from Mark 14, 12 to 16, and 22 to 26. This is the institution narrative of the Eucharist in the Gospel of Mark. Jesus and his disciples are celebrating the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is associated with the Passover. And so he tells his disciples to go into the city and to find a man carrying a water jar. Now normally, women would carry water jars, but in a certain part of the city, only the men carried the water jar because these particular men were frightened of being ritually impure. Remember, a woman once a month has a menstrual cycle and she's impure during that time, according to Jewish purity laws. Well, the Essenes, those celibate monks who lived by the Dead Sea, also had a community inside of Jerusalem. And the members of that community were very, very careful not to become ritually impure. So in their community, only the men carried the water jars. They sat down for the meal and Jesus took a piece of bread now this is part of a half a piece of matzah that had been hidden at the beginning of the meal. And he says, this is my body, in Aramaic gufi, which literally means this is me. He takes the cup and says, this is the blood of the covenant that is to be shed for many. Shed for many means shed for everyone. 
cover the blood of the covenant. That what's inside of this chalice, there's blood. In Mark and Matthew, the Aramaic version of the institution narrative, it is very clear that blood is inside that cup. Whereas in Luke and Paul, 1 Corinthians, it's covenant that's inside the cup. A covenant that was established through the blood of Jesus, but what one actually drinks is covenant. That's probably a softening of the phrase because the way Jesus said it in Aramaic was just a bit too graphic for the Greek tastes. And Jesus speaks about not drinking again until he comes again into his kingdom. Is that on the cross? Is that at the resurrection? Is that at the second coming? It's really not clear. And the cup that Jesus offered was the third cup, not the fourth. That's the one he didn't drink. There were four cups of wine that were shared during the Passover meal. And Jesus consecrates the third one, making it his blood. Remember how blood was essential for the establishment of a covenant. We saw that in the first reading. Well, that blood is shared in the institution narrative of the Eucharist and also on the cross. And may God bless us.